So, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Make It Happen with Chamara, the interview series. Um, those of you who do not know, the purpose of this interview series is really to offer views, strategies, and stories to encourage and inspire women to tap into their inner being, embrace who they are, dream bigger, and dig deeper within. I'm Jamara Hollingsworth, and I'm from Vision to Reality International, and I help women to women in business specifically to take bold, decisive action. And today, I have with me Crystal Howell. So Crystal is CPA, well, these are these titles after her name, CPA, CIA, COSO, ALMIACS, and BSE. And she is an internal auditor of 15 years, both internally with Sajikor and externally with Ernst & Young audit experience. All right, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, she is a training facilitator for the Institute of Internal Auditors Barbados chapter and a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Barbados Communications Committee. All of this, the Integrity Group Barbados and the Thorne Commission on Local Governance under the Ministry of People, Employment and Elder Affairs. Now, Krista has been the driving force behind awareness concerning key issues related to the Barbados Auditor General's report and several hot topics with expert guest speakers and government ministers. Further to this, she's also conducted online lectures for an online lecture for the U.S. Embassy speaking on the topic of community organization activism as a part of their 2020 Women in Politics series. Moderated the UE's 2020 gathering series on ethics and governance in small populations and the social media segment of the Central Bank's Six Caribbean Economic Forum. Um, she's been the guest speaker for ICAB, ICSA, the Governance Institute, Rotary Bridgetown, the Rotaract, Barbados West, Kiwanis Club of Bridgetown, the Barbados Union of Teachers, the Barbados Workers Union, Cooperative Credit Union, and the Internet Society Barbados chapter speaking on financial or integrity topics. Girl, you're doing things. <laughs> All right, she's appeared on local media programs such as CBC's The People's Business, CBC's Morning Barbados, VOB Hot 95.3, sorry, VOB Hot 95.3, Slam One on One, Going On, The Boiler Room, and Tea Time with Greg, as well as the Antigua's radio program, The Observer. She was also highlighted for her work in the St. Vincent radio program early in the morning with Jerry George. Crystal has also been highlighted by the permanent mission of Barbados to the United Nations and the WTO. Geneva was one of, okay, and WTO Geneva as one of the 13 women honored on International Women's Day 2020. She's currently, or she currently has a recurring segment on CBC's Morning Barbados entitled Managing Your Pennies, which discusses financial management and an online column with the local newspaper, Nation newspaper. In her spare time, Crystal is an avid artist, artist and a lover of that. Welcome, Crystal. Thank you. I must say that was a mouthful, but I'm, I'm glad to see <laughs> that you are just doing some things, you know? So, it, it got me to hear <laughs> And that was a shorthand version of the bio people. Yeah, yeah that's, a the short so that's, that's a short version. That's a short version. So before we get started, what I usually do is I play a little game with my guests. So today's game is called My Favorite Things. And what I'm going to be doing, I'm just going to be um, calling words and you're going to tell me your favorite in that category. So for instance, favorite color. Purple. All right. Mine too. Movie. Oh, that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Food. What's your favorite food? Um. Oh my god. I'm not even a foodie, but I have so many favorite foods. <laughs> that would be between shepherd's pie, mm -hmm. cuckoo, or soup. One of three of those. Lost me at cuckoo. But anyway, <laughs> um, okay, so you have a favorite book? Um, I think Alex Haley's Queen is probably my favorite book still. I have a lot, but I've read that one several times. It was really, it was really, really good. Um, okay. I think, yeah, that's probably still my favorite one. Okay. I'll look into that one. Okay. And lastly, your favorite fruit. Pardon? Your favorite fruit. Oh, fruit, mangoes. Okay. I can't say all of them. I to them, yeah. so I well, oh dear, you are fortunate yeah. fool. <laughs> are you Asian and allergic to mangoes? Girl, it, I don't know. It just is. <clears throat> All right. So let's get into the first question. Yes. Welcome, Bajan fam. Welcome, Mariposa, and everyone else who would have joined. Um. So, Crystal, what? So today, I guess we're going to be focusing a little bit on Crystal Clear, um, I guess what you do in business, and then also Crystal's creation. So I guess you could think of any of these three things when I'm asking the questions. Um, so what was the brilliant, audacious, dynamic dream that inspired you to start with your business or start in the areas that you're in? Well, to be crystal clear, <laughs> I actually do not own my own full-time business. I should make mm -hmm. it very clear. I work for Sagicor. A lot of people do not seem to know that, even though I say many, many times. I do work for Sagicor, but I loved business from secondary school, and thankfully I at least was able to do a decent job at passing the people's exams. And... Uh, Ernst & Young would have been where I really developed the love for auditing. And I know when people hear about the auditors, they start to get a little scared or worried. But I think we've been doing, having more inroads into getting persons to understand that auditors are there to help your business. We're mm -hmm. supposed to be the trusted advisors. We're the ones who want to make sure things are going well. And... I think going then into Sagicor with the internal audit, it gives a broader perspective as to how you can help a business holistically to grow. Because as an external auditor, you focus kind of on the money. Not mm -hmm. that the money isn't important. If your business isn't making money, then was the point. But there's so many other aspects to a business that are essential to its growth, to its development, and I think being able, being a person who intrinsically likes to help persons, even though I am leaning more to the introvert side, I do like to see people growing and developing. And mm -hmm. that's why I love this job so much because it's very fulfilling to be able to see the work that you put in helping a business to grow. And that's where Crystal Clear would have come into play because I wanted small businesses who don't normally have access to this kind of information to still be able to get some little tidbits and some help with mm -hmm. things that you would have seen, well, I would have seen across so many different businesses, across a lot of the places that I would have audited. If these big businesses are not able to get these things done without help, I figured these smaller businesses had to be really struggling and can't afford sometimes the expert financial help that's necessary so mm -hmm. i try to I, you know you start small you put these small things out there the basics make sure that persons have those things down pat and then as you can get more into it you give them more and more details that will be able to help them to start thinking like a business because a lot of persons don't realize as fulfilling as it is to own a business it's a lot of work 
especially if you're doing it by yourself, you are the chief cook and baho washer. So having some person to help you with those aspects that you're not that great at, that's what I've been trying to do with my social media channels. Okay. Um, okay, so before we go on, just so everyone knows, feel free to ask any questions or drop any comments in the chat. We'll be sure to ensure that these questions are asked and answered. Um, and also stay tuned to the end. As always, there's a giveaway coming at the very end of the show. Okay? Now, two things I wanted to ask based on what you were telling me just now. Um, my first question since you were already talking about um, the auditing and the processes, um, could you give a quick clarification about the difference between an internal audit and an external audit? Sure. Most persons may or may not know about the big four firms. Those would be Ernst & Young, PricewaterhouseCoopers, KPMG, and Deloitte. There are also some other smaller audit firms that would perform financial assessments of the business. And the reason that is necessary, banks and other financial institutions, lending institutions, investors, even customers are relying on these financial statements to tell them how a business is performing. And of course, persons who own the business is going to want to make sure that the business looks like it's performing great and wonderfully. So you want an independent person to say, if I'm seeing this number, this number is uh, pretty much accurate. You can't guarantee 100% accuracy, of course, but we are there to give some assurance that, you know, the numbers are pretty decent. You can rely on them to make whatever decisions you have to make. And external auditor works, as I would mention, for a firm, Whereas now for internal auditors, we work for the company itself. And the per we serve multiple purposes, which I didn't realize how broad it was until I got into it. But we would serve from as wide as making sure you're complying with laws and regulations, that whatever processes you have are functioning properly. So if you have, I like to tease the people at CBC all the time, I use examples of what is going on within their studios. If your studio is supposed to start at this amount of time and you're supposed to have a prompter, you're supposed to have a producer, you're supposed to have this, and they're supposed to be following these rules for that particular process, how is it being managed to make sure it's at, at optimal performance? And that's what we try to do to make sure that whatever process is, whether it's managing cash, inventory, mm -hmm. people who owe you money, whatever customer service, loans, any process that you have in your business, how is it supposed to be performing? And is it actually performing the way it should? Are there things we can suggest to make sure it's working even better? There are some internal auditors that would go into fraud investigations, some that specialize in IT. It's a very, very wide scope when it mm -hmm. comes to the internal auditor. We can dig up pretty much anything in your business and try to make it better. Okay. So that being said, how important is it for, does a person have to be incorporated to be focused on these things or could it also be a sole trader needing to look into these things as well or partnership? You, you, any business can have, as long as you can afford one, because it's not mandatory to have an internal auditor. But if you are incorporated, you are going to have to have audited financial statements, which is why some persons usually try to avoid the incorporation, but there are lots of benefits along with, so you have to weigh the pros and the cons when you're talking about incorporating a business. You have tax benefits if you incorporate, because most persons may not know that if you are trading and you've just only registered the business name, you're going to pay taxes on that like an individual. So whatever your individual tax rate is, that money that comes into the business, it's going to look like it's coming to you as an individual, which means it's going to be taxed at that individual rate, which is usually much, much higher than the 5% or less corporation rate. So if your business is making a lot of money and you want to try to kind of 
we have these things called avoid taxes rather than evade. Evading is illegal, but avoiding is quite legal. You want to make sure you go in a path that minimizes the amount of taxes that you pay. Incorporation may be something you could consider, especially if your business is growing and making a lot of money. But you need to understand what comes along with that. Having some person come in to make sure your financials are in order is one of the things that would be required. So if you have, there are persons who are not incorporated and they're still bringing auditors, they still try to go above board so that whenever they make that decision, it's a smooth transition. The persons who invested in them already have the confidence. Yes, you may not be incorporated, but we see that you've taken the lengths to make sure that we are still confident about what's going on with your business. And many times persons would hire them on a consulting basis rather than full time. They will come in and look at a particular area or look at the financials and be able to say for that period of time that they would have come in. This is what you may or may not have to do to improve what's going on. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So before we go any further, this is more on the personal end. How do you find it balancing between working for an organization and doing your own business? How do you make, how do you balance that? It's been a lot easier since COVID, which is ironic, I know. Um, a lot of persons have had more difficulty since COVID, but SagiCore has been one of the entities that's been working from home. I've actually been working from home since March last year. And that has made time, so the time that you would spend traveling, getting ready for work, all those other things, that has what has given me the time to actually take a lot of these things a lot more serious. And I know a lot of these things sound like, this is so much, where do you find the time, where do you find the time? That's, I get that question a lot. But I usually say yes to opportunities that would already play to my skill sets. So literally the only thing on that list that you call that required me doing a lot of research on my own would have been the time when the U.S. Embassy asked me to speak on um, local governance. And mm -hmm. I had to do research for that because as much as I know where Barbados stands, they wanted it from a broader perspective with the rest of the Caribbean. And I would have used my vacation time to do some of that research to be able to give a more holistic presentation. But generally speaking, because of my training, because of the education that I would have gotten into and the public speaking skills that I would have developed, most of the things you see me doing, I am literally doing from my head. <laughs> so it's a matter of just showing up. And especially, ladies, even with the segment on Morning Barbados, I, yes, at first I was doing a lot of stuff from my experience and stuff like that. But then because of my connections with the Institute of Internal Auditors and with ICAB and as a CPA, there are materials that they will provide to us to be able to go and make these kind of presentations. So mm -hmm. again, people think, oh, you always, Morning Barbie, this is 10 minutes once a week. And even this is, is, is not a lot of preparation if it's within your field of expertise. So mm -hmm. it's literally just a matter of showing up. The Instagram and developing the Facebook, that actually is what consumes the most of my time because it's not something I'm very good at. I am not, believe it or not, I am not very savvy when it comes to social media. It, I find it very time consuming and it takes away from the other things I'd love to be doing, like my art. That's what I would love to be focusing on when evenings come or doing some education, some public speaking, some sharing of knowledge. Managing a social media account to meet is the more time consuming thing out of all the things that you would have listed off that I do. Mm. I agree. It could, it can be very, I don't want to say daunting, but it can be very time consuming. Especially That's if you're because the person. you come from a generation that does not enjoy it. <laughs> no, but I mean like, especially if you're the person doing your own like graphics and everything for the account, yeah. that's where it can get very time consuming. Because yep. you might have things that you want to say, but if you want a visual note to go about with that, 
It yep. can take something. It does. Um, okay. Uh, so, you kind of did you did you have an aha moment that made you really decide that you? I mean, I know you talked about your love of auditing when you are growing a love for auditing when you went into Ernst and Young, but what made you get into accounts in the first place or finance? Like, you know, when you're at secondary school and they have these job fairs mm -hmm. when you're in third form and you were taught, they were all talking about these different careers and don't, don't, I was not one of those bright sparks in case anybody wasn't aware. I was very average because, and this is speaking from a perspective of somebody who went to one of the older secondary schools. You may be the top person when you're in primary school, but then when you go to secondary school where everybody else performs the same as you, you then realize you're very average. So you struggle to kind of like try to figure out where it is that I fit in. And mm -hmm. it was kind of a process of elimination based on the other things that were, were going on. And when the job fair came along, the person was talking about accounting and how it can make you a good salary. That appealed mm -hmm. to me because I come from a really poor background and I always wanted to be able to get into a career that can bring some stability that would change the circumstances that I was in. So it was kind of like a shot in the dark. Let's see how this goes because I didn't know nothing about accounting. I didn't know nothing about business. And thankfully, I actually could get it done. It was the first time I actually started to do well at school. And it turned out, thank God, it turned out okay because there were, there were, I wasn't going into sciences. I sucked at languages. I definitely wasn't going to be tech form with all the boys. So that was... <laughs> It literally was a process of elimination and it came down to that and it happened to work out. But mm -hmm. as I said, I really started to find my way when I went to Ernst Young because they had really great mentors. It really showed me what female leadership was all about because they were very much interested in how I grew as an individual. And again, that was lucky to draw because not everyone had managers that were that invested in them. So I think I have had, in along with the hard work, I've also had great opportunities that made that hard work pay off because not mm -hmm. everybody who works hard gets the opportunities for their hard work to turn out to be something of substance. So I'm mm -hmm. always very, very grateful that I had the opportunities along with the work ethic. Okay. Thank you. All right. So... Kind of answered a good few of my questions. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, so would you say you had to make any shifts in your perspective in order to, um, well, not only get into the business and, well, get into auditing, but also get into the business that you're in um, outside of your day job? You definitely, definitely, I feel like I'm shifting my perspective all the time because you're always growing, you're always learning, you're always realizing there's some, there's a better way to do things. If you stay trying to only work with what you have without learning, without growing, you're doing yourself a disservice. And it's not always fun. It's not always something you can stick to and say, I'm always going to be learning, I'm always going to be growing. Sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you get exhausted, but I am not the same person. I would think same thing goes for you, Tamara, and everyone else on this call. If you think about who you were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and you can say that you're the same person, something is wrong. We've all grown, matured, had experiences that shifted our perspective and way of doing things. And even as I said, the transition even from Ernst and Young to Sajikor. Sajikor has changed my perspective as to how I view business entirely. I'm not seeing it just as the money and the money and the money, but how 
certain qu um, qualitative factors can have mm -hmm. a real impact on how a business performs. How something as simple as how you respond to customers and the reputation you have. When you say something, which most people on this call can probably relate to, when you say Shafet and you say KFC, you get two completely different pictures when it comes to customer service. Mm -hmm. Just by saying those words has nothing to do with whether they have good business strategies, good money-making strategies, nothing else. Just off of saying those two words alone and saying customer service, you know exactly what kind of reputation I am speaking of. And those are the kind of things that made me open my eyes to how difficult it is to have that this I admire persons who start a business. That's the that's the truth. Because and if you've ever read the e myth, I think mm -hmm. every person who owns a business should read the e myth and read it. I agree. It is mm -hmm. it literally spells out what you have to be, how you have to be thinking as a business person. And this is why I'm glad that I am the helper, not the doer. So that's when it comes to these things, because being a business owner is so much work. It really is. It really, really, really is. Um, so for those of you who don't know what she's talking about, there's a book called The E-Myth Revisited by Michael E. Gerber. You can probably check that out. Um, it's on YouTube for free for those who, if you're good with audiobooks, you can download it as well. So you don't really have an excuse, oh, I don't have the money or I don't have the time. Yeah. Put it on your radio, however you listen to it. Mm -hmm. If you are a business owner, please, please make that required reading. It's, it's a really good reading, I, I must say. And, and it really would shift your perspective on how to do business yes okay so don't forget um feel free to ask any questions or drop any comments in the chat i'm just gonna before i forget type out the name of the book or foxy hey, just put it in the chat oh you put it in okay great yes. it's not it's actually miss she accidentally put it r just so you um yeah good so, based on what you were talking about, like for instance, you just mentioned one of the things about like what what type of things do you do to learn and grow? I read a lot, <laughs> and even recently, I think I've more taken to audio books because I can listen to the audio book and still be doing something else in the background. So. Mm -hmm. People think that I watch a lot of TV, and yes, I do, but a lot of times TV is background noise. I've watched entire series. I can't tell you what a single character looks like because it's just there to keep me company while I'm doing right. something. But in recent times, I've more leaned to audio books because it feels like you could kill two birds with one stone. So yeah. that is what I, I've been leaning towards. Um, you can go over the question again. I don't know. I remember one of my things is absent-minded. <laughs> no, you kind of think, I'm just asking like what things you do to learn and grow because you were talking about how throughout the process you have to continue to learn and grow. Yeah. Um, um, I, I also try to mix and mingle with persons who have different perspectives to myself because mm -hmm. if my circle is surrounded with persons who think exactly like me, I'll end up in an echo chamber with persons reinforcing what I already feel, think, and know. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like almost like a shortcut to being able to experience different ways of thinking, different ways of being and existing. And mm -hmm. I think that's what has, like, person, I, if I had to put every person I know in one room, <laughs> it would just be crazy between the dancers, persons in the, um, entertainment industry and the business community is mm -hmm. just my I've been all over the place I just love seeing and hearing other people's experiences and that's why that's the only thing COVID, not the only thing but one of the things that COVID would have really messed up for me I really wanted to start traveling more because mm -hmm. I really haven't traveled that much and I think it would help 
because a lot of us as Barbians, we've only experienced this life and mm -hmm. this way of doing things, this way of running a business. But even with social media, I'm getting to reach out to persons in other countries and seeing how they think, how they do things is like, why aren't we doing this? Why are we making life so much harder for ourselves? Why is it that even sometimes in other Caribbean countries, I've visited some Caribbean countries that were behind us in technology, in innovation, in way of doing business, and then you come back five, six years later, and they've passed us out. St. Kitts is one that comes to mind. Antigua is one that comes to mind. And it's, it's a little frustrating because we have the capabilities, we have the capacity as Barbadians to do really, really well, but something seems to fall off the plate between the learning and the doing for us. And I'm not exactly sure what it is, but that implementation deficit is very, mm -hmm. very real. That comfort zone that we love is very, very real. So I, I, I just, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was actually saying I actually had a, a conversation which was similar to that where I was talking about um, the differences. For, like, for instance, I was telling a friend of mine that I mm -hmm. knew somebody that once they got information, they were able to implement it almost immediately. Mm -hmm. Right? And then for me, I am the type of person that I have to read. Like, for me, instance, I would read myth revisited today i would read like probably five other books and then start to read things in different areas and then later down the line it will go ah wait i understand now and then it can start to implement it, it doesn't click for me the same exact time but there are people who it clicks for and i actually wonder what really makes it so different if it's really just a personality type or if there's something that can be done to help people to be instant implementers or if there's a benefit to 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 not being able to implement at the same time right let me just go back so patrice mckenzie she said that part is true don't look at the screen i guess i missed that so i'm not quite sure and then um, Foxy Faye, well, Marcia Hollinsworth says hello. Foxy Faye is having a dis. Oh, she she was having a discussion about the same thing today, right? Um, so I agree with you. I think that in general we need to be able to we we know a lot, um, but are we so distracted that that we can't implement what we know in the quickest possible time? You know? I I think. The other thing, too, that I've seen a lot, um, when you ask some person what you think can be done to change something, almost every single time they will tell you, this person should do this or this person should do that. Nobody we're, always, we're always, always looking for somebody else to do something while we continue to do whatever it is we're doing because we always see other people as having more time to do something than us. And I'm not even saying we're not legitimately busy, but we can't keep expecting if we want something to change that the responsibility is on somebody else. Somebody else. Where, 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 what is our role in this? And this comes mm -hmm. down to almost every single argument I see on social media and everything else, whether it's what teachers should do or what parents should do or what this body... Everybody always thinks it's somebody else to do something mm -hmm. for the system to change. What is it that you have to do? And I, I've been trying to ask myself that question as well more too. I am not saying that there aren't certain points you will come to where you've done every single thing you can and the roadblock is at something else. But I'd like to exhaust where my responsibility comes in first before mm -hmm. I go looking to say, you have to do this or you have to do that for something to happen. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So before we go on to the last set of questions, I have another game. Um, okay. So this game is really fill in the blanks. And here what we're going to do is that you're going to pick three numbers and I'm going to ask you those questions and you're going to finish 
the sentences, so to speak. All right? So the three questions between one and ten. Okay. I will go with seven. What is it, seven? So one of my keys to success is Consistent habits. Um, and this is something that some of my friends that are on the chat would know we've been talking about recently, especially when it comes to exercising, because for those who do not know, I hear exercising. It's why I was in dance classes for so long, because it was the, the cheating way to exercise and stay fit and have fun. I absolutely hate exercising, but the habit I developed was just turn up to boot camp. That's it. Mm -hmm. Just just turn up. I want to say turn up. I know the group of persons that I work out with, that's going to take care of everything else. They're going to motivate me with the motivation I do not have. They're going to push me. They're going to get me to do the things I don't want to do. And that has been my life for the most part some things are easier than others so i i am fully motivated when it comes to trying to manage finances and everything else and i know that's a weakness for some persons but if the, the finding the habits for the things you're not good at the things you struggle with is the only way that you're going to be able to make it also even we've been trying to find new ways to build different habits because of the lockdown, because of the impending curfew that's going to be really tight, how do we still keep good habits so that we can still get through with the goals that we've set in mind? And that boils down to also knowing what is your goal. I encourage persons not to just wait till January. I never wait till January to set goals. What is it that you want out of life? Where the direction you're going to and once you know that direction then it's easier to be able to figure out okay I need to do this I need to do that I know I won't lose let's say you want to lose 10 pounds you're not going to lose 10 pounds off of willpower not going to happen what habits do you have to put in place to get yourself to lose those 10 pounds whether it is going to the supermarket with certain blinkers on because you know if you go, you can pick up all the junk food, whether it is making sure that if certain things come in the house, you give them away as soon as you can so the temptation isn't there. What habits are you going to put in place to help you to stick to your goals? So if anybody in the chat has any habits that can help us to figure out how to get back onto the exercise track on your own, that's one I have not figured out yet. The only exercising that I seem to be able to do on my own is walking. And walking sucks for me because then I lose too much weight. I kind of have an mm. opposite goal to most people. But if anybody in the chat can give me some help with that, because the other thing you recognize too is nobody knows everything. I am not good at everything. And I need to lean on persons who figured out certain things the way people lean on me because I figured out how to manage finances and how to manage money so we are not an island mm -hmm. we may think that we can you know super women and this and that and we don't need nobody nope we need people we do so you know just make sure that you have a good tribe which i believe that i do i have persons in my tribe that have been there for me because mental health is another thing that has definitely been a struggle where your COVID is concerned. And I would not have managed without my tribe, without therapy, without all these things that have usually been taboo topics, but that we need to talk about because, and again, it's similar to the whole coming out of Ernst & Young to Sajikor, where Ernst & Young was focused on the financial wellness. A lot of people mm. think that to be good in Barbados or to be good as a human being, if you make him money, Everything else in your life is good. That's not the case. We measure success as human beings as only being able to make money. How is your mental health? How is your relationship with your family and your friends? 
how are you be able to get through health ways like our lives and our existence is so much more than that one factor mm-hmm. and i lean on my friends to help me with those things because sometimes i feel so the only thing i got going good <laughs> is managing finances my friends help me through my family my sister they're the ones who help me through with everything else that i struggle with so i i wanted to put that out there because i don't want people to feel as though you know if they don't have this aspect of their life figured out their life does is not as meaningful as someone else's okay thank you sharma says so she's listening to this live and walking <laughs> Charmin is like a big sister to me. She's a huge inspiration and support for me at work. She is definitely one of my biggest supporters and helpers and I love her very much. Well, Charmin is a very lovable person to be quite honest. Yes. It's very easy to love her. Um okay, so what's the next number? We got 7. Let me go with four. Okay, so number four. What is the worst advice? Okay, sorry. The worst advice I ever received was the worst advice I ever received. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Hmm. That's a good one. Cause I was already talking to people and they tell me shit. I hope I could sit down and then say. <laughs> Um the worst advice that I've ever received Oh hmm That's a good one. I I I think I might go come back to that one cuz I have all that I'm going through in my head is all the great advice I've ever received in life but I've never sat down to think about the worst advice I could think about some of the worst friends that I've ever made <laughs> um hmm I I have to give that one some thought I I really you, this is the first time I've been stumped in a long time I'm always up to the challenge <laughs> next number me go with 10 okay so number 10 my biggest challenge so far in business is my biggest challenge in business it has been trying to make sure you still add value i think as an especially as an auditor the expectation is always that you have to be adding value adding value adding value so it's gone beyond just telling persons if the numbers are good what how are you helping this business to grow how are you and especially in a time of covid everybody wants to know how can my business do better how can i get more customers how can i do this how can i do that and it's actually easier to advise smaller businesses because there's so much scope for growth but then when you come to a large entity that the machine is already turning and they they implement things that they're supposed to do and everything else they want their growth for their expect- expectations for growth for exponential so you mm-hmm. have to always be looking at what other persons in similar industries or what innovative companies are doing and how you can then implement this for the company that you work for and it's not always the easiest thing to do because sometimes implementing certain changes are take a while and same thing as you would have said sometimes it feels as though people need to see. we do tend to pick things apart a lot we want to see that somebody else has done it and that it works before we go doing something else we really want to be the innovators and i think it goes back to how we were in school where getting the wrong answer always got you ridiculed or punished mm-hmm. so we have this idea where we only are supposed to give textbook answers but that thinking has done a disservice for us because now we're afraid to try anything that could possibly be wrong 
and trying mm -hmm. to get businesses to try something new at the risk that it may not work is one of the biggest challenges that I've been experiencing for sure. And it's an ongoing challenge, I would say, because no one wants to be the guinea pig. No one wants to try something new. Everybody wants to do something that's been done and proven already. But most of the time when you get to that point, it's already too late. Everybody's doing it. So mm -hmm. I would say that's definitely my biggest career challenge and a personal challenge because I'm trying to do it for myself as well too, where I challenge myself to do something that is new, that is innovative, that not necessarily everybody else is doing, that I have the comfort to say, oh, a lot of people have done this and it's worked so I can get into it. That's what I've been trying to challenge myself to do personally as well. Okay. All right. So, Foxy Faye, earlier when we were talking about um, mm, your the case yeah. Right, she started. She talked about the Maslow's theory of needs, and the key is mm -hmm. striking a balance. Yeah. And I also think the key is understanding that balance does not mean everything is equal. No, um, for sure. It's flexibility and balance. Even from a dance perspective, now that I think about it, you know, balance is not about everything being on the same plane. You have to yeah. be able to find balance in, I guess, any any possible position. Which yeah. areas of your life? need more focus at this time you know and yeah. which things could do with a little less attention right now but knowing that at some point the tables might turn they might need to focus on this other area a bit more so yeah. as some people will say I'm rolling with the punches yeah i think balance is something like that um so i'm not going to forget that you did not answer my number four. I, I didn't forget. I'm still here trying to rack my brain at, at terrible advice. Uh, <laughs> but based on that, though, one of the things, I, I think in one of the earlier interviews, too, um, mm -hmm. you know, somebody, and um, I think the first lady, um, Joy, she was talking about, in terms of worst advice, she couldn't, she started talking about what her worst advice was Oh, like people who she and then she started talking about um trying to stick with people who are like minded. But one of the things that I do remember saying is that at the end of the day, and it ties back in with what you said earlier, it is also good to have people who do not see things the same way that you do, right? Because and and when you take advice you take it with a grain of salt and you choose yeah. look at what the possibilities are based on what they've given you the advice they've given you and then you you make your decisions based on where it is that you are looking to go because we see it a lot you know sometimes you see a group of 10 guys going and doing some ridiculous thing and you wonder like Ooh, at which point did somebody can say stop <laughs> everybody has the same mindset right yeah. You need to have people with different mindsets in your grouping so that you can be able to see the bigger picture and the different yeah. possibilities that exist. So yeah. I don't even know if there's ever such a thing as bad advice per se. I, that's what I was thinking because I actually came up with mm -hmm. something and it was bad advice, I think, because people, well, what, what it is really is there's so many people who advise me that I should get into politics. And mm -hmm. I think I just blank it from my mind because people associate me as political because I have an opinion on things that politicians may say. And I'm here thinking by that definition then everybody in Barbados should be political because the things that they are doing are impacting our lives. They're impacting our taxes. I don't like paying mm -hmm. enough taxes or I should say if I'm going to pay a lot of taxes, I would like to know that it's being managed properly and going where it's supposed to go because it's technically supposed to help the society that I'm living in. When I go to the hospital, I'm able to go for free for certain things. When I do certain, there's certain benefits to paying taxes. If the money is managed properly, when it's mismanaged, I have to bear the brunt by increased taxes or reduced benefits. So I guess for me, I've always wondered why more people don't say something, but I mm -hmm. guess people have not reached the point where the increase in taxes have squeezed them to the point where 
they must, must, must say something. <laughs> but I personally, because of my personality, mm -hmm. I, I can... I can be an extrovert when necessary, but it's not my natural state of being. I'm comfortable with public speaking. I'm comfortable interacting with persons. But most people who know me know me, know that I like more so one-on-one -on -one interactions, small, mm. smaller, like talking to a whole bunch of strangers for all the time. That would be a nightmare for me. Having to go door to door knocking on houses, nightmare. Having to remember lots of people's names, nightmare. Having to be in, give public speeches all the time, all the time, all the time, nightmare. I think I, I would like to speak when I think there's something to say, not necessarily because mm -hmm. Tuesday Parliament has come around, you have to say something. But to me, the political knife just feels like a nightmare and I don't mind helping the current whatever administration is in power because helping whatever administration in power is to help my country regardless mm -hmm. of who's in power make and i think helping isn't just saying yes all the time i will say yes if i think they're going down the right path but if and this is what this is why i probably don't have certain friends because if i think you're doing nonsense I am either going to keep my mouth shut. You're not going to hear me giving you any kind of affirmation or bigging you up or encouraging you to do anything, depending on the personality you have. If I think you're going to listen to me and hear me out when I say I think you're not doing something right, I will say something. But if you don't hear me encouraging you, that's already a sign that I think is a, is a bad idea. That, that's usually a sign. But I... I as far as all the persons who advise me to get into politics, I understand where it comes from. I know it's coming from a place where you think I will do a good job. God knows I may do a good job, but I, I would not enjoy that life. I personally would not. So thanks for that advice, but it's really, really, really not for me. Fair enough. Girl, the time. I you know, just... I know, I know. It's whoa, disappeared. Whoa. But, um... However, I was trying to decide which question to ask. But before we go on to the next question, what I'm going to do, just in case it does cut out, is I'm going to ask a question. Can I, okay, so the prize that I'm giving away tonight is a copy of my newest ebook called Step Up. And the person who wins this is going to tell me what. Crystal said was her biggest challenge so far in business. Okay? So while we wait on you to answer that, what did Crystal say was her biggest challenge so far in business? While I wait on the answer for that, Crystal, what's your definition of success? Happiness. That and, and that's a definition that has changed over the years. But for me, right now, if I am happy with the friends that I have, with the relationships that I have, with the with business, romantic, friends, platonic, whatever relationships that I have, if I am happy with those, I will consider myself success. Money in the bank is great. I'm not going to turn it down. If anybody wants to send any money, you know, give my bank account. But all jokes aside, Mm -hmm. Building re meaningful relationships in all of those aspects of my life, in health and everything else, that's my definition of success. Okay. Thank you. And what kind of changes would you say you've had to make in your relationships over the years in order to get to where you are now? And this could be your relationship with self. Foxy Faye has won the prize. Adding value to bigger business with regards to, to other team. Yeah. Other team. Yep. That's it. Almost exactly what she said. So much. <laughs> I will contact you after the call to see how I can get the ebook to you. Okay? All right. So what kind of changes have you had to make in your relationships thus far? 
I spent, well, 2019, I had resolved to be a better friend. And mm -hmm. I think that one was the most difficult because a lot of the things that I see persons and even the friends that I have typically do to build friendships and relationships were things that I just was not good at at all. I am not, definitely not the kind of person that even though I know I should, that would check in on you every day. I see people message me every day and it makes me feel almost bad because they're doing things that I appreciate and I like and I never seem able to reciprocate before they do it. And I had said I wanted to spend more time with my friends. COVID kind of messed that up. I mean, I wanted to build a better relationship with persons to really get to know them better, to know what what their dreams and their goals and everything else was because I'm putting so much things out there for the general public. I wanted to make sure I made more of an effort to do that for my friends. So it's still an area that I'm struggling with, but I think I, based on how I feel like the relationships have improved, especially with my sister, I think that one was the, to me, that feels like the biggest accomplishment, how our relationship has improved. I'm really, really happy with the direction it's going. I'm not going to say I'm there yet or where I would like to be yet, but I definitely feel closer to a lot of my friends than I did before, my, especially like my cousin, Diana. And that means a lot to me. So I am going to continue working on that and continue to beg them to, you know, don't write me off, please. <laughs> but... I will definitely say that's the, that's my biggest, biggest, biggest thing that I'm working towards for sure. Okay. So I know it's not business related, but but I think no, no, but it's not all about business. I think we yeah. have to understand that there's there's more to life than the work. Um, yeah. So I would say you have. Some people bigging you up. You have 246T saying that you're on your way and Charmaine is saying that you're there when it comes, you know? And that's what really matters, being there when it comes. Um, so this will be my last question and it's going back to something. I have so many more questions, but I don't want to overdo it with Instagram, right? But it's related yeah. to something you said, or oh, when you were talking about... Um, your keys to success being consistent habits. Um, how do you determine the habits that you want to develop? I try to do what will work. And I, I think that, so like I make it hard for certain things for, for me to lapse. So mm -hmm. even in terms, I will do the money one because I know money is one that a lot of persons struggle with. But for instance, I if I want to save a particular set of money from the and this is something I've been doing for the time I started working when I was sixteen years old. I will put the money on the credit union in the premier plan because you can't access that from the ATM, which means mm -hmm. it forces you to live off of what is left. And if you really, really need it, you have to really decide, do I really, really, really need this to get into my vehicle, to drive down to the credit union, to go and stand up in the line, to go and take out that money. And I'm not saying I've never been in a situation where I have to do that, but I can. It literally does not happen. I hate getting, leaving home just to go to the bank, to go and stand up in line. I hate standing up in lines. So I've done things that have made breaking habits difficult. And I have to keep thinking like that. And that's that's how I try to apply everything in my life. How do I make it hard for me to slip back into bad habits? Which is why I would do the boot camp. I, would, I chose a boot camp with some person that I trust very much as a trainer. And with a community that I love. And three minutes away from home, like I had a trifecta going for me. Because it's just right there. Sometimes I'd be in here mentally trying to figure out what you could do to not go to go to boot camp. And then 10 minutes before, I'd be like, all right, let me hustle park clothes and go down the road and barely scrape into boot camp in time to go and get my backside victim to shape. 
developing those habits and having persons who help to make the journey easier has been my goal too. Everybody trying to do everything by themselves. I know there are persons who screw you over. I'm not going to pretend that does not happen. But try hard to build relationships with persons who are going to help to keep you accountable because it's hard to do it by yourself. It's really, really, really hard. Money I can do by myself because, as I said, I, I have abundance of motivation there. But for anything that I find difficult, I always try to